Hi guys, I'm Bora and today we will solve another physics problem. So uh, this problem again is not from the University of Physics Blue. <laughs> and if you want to solve the question, I will give you time. So uh, in the question, we have a meteor that is... Um, I actually... It's so, we have a meteor coming towards the surface, a bed of sand, okay? And in the question, on option A, we need to find the speed before it crashes with the surface, with the sand, that is. So, um, in option B, we need to find the uh, work done on this mete mete meteor by the sand for it to stop, and it stops at this height, I mean this deepness level, which is 3.25 meters. In option C, we need to find the average force um, done on the meteor by the sand and the thermal energy in option D. So, if you want to solve the question by yourself, you may stop the video now. Okay, so um, in option A, we need to find the, the speed before crashing. Let's, um, let's think about it. Can we use kinematics here? If we use kinematics, we will, um, you know, achieve a different result um, than using the, uh, than following the path of energy conversation. Because, remember that this 850 kilometers is very large. So, um, in that uh, interval, our um, gravitational acceleration wouldn't be the same, so we wouldn't have a constant acceleration. That's why we, sh we should use uh, energy conversation here. So, for A, option A, we have our initial energy and final energy that we're just going to equalize them. So, um, this, as you can write as an equation, so we have our initial energy, which is the kinetic energy and the um, potential energy summed. So, you see our kinetic energy, you see our potential energy, these formulas must be familiar to you. We have in the final energy uh, part, we still have these two things, but with um, some of the parameters changed to final form, such as velocity of C actually, and the distance from the point. So, uh, writing these, equating these, one house times m, in M here is the mass of meteor, which we have as 555 kilo kilograms. But I didn't write 575 uh, actually, because we can, you know, we can um, cancel these factors because the M is apparent in all of the factors in uh, alongside the equation. So times 90 uh, squared. Remember, I'm using the uh, meter per second here, so I need to convert this, which is uh, the distance from the surface to meteor, which is 850 kilometers, but I have, but I have to turn it, convert it to um, meters, so I just, basically I just multiply it with 1000, so it would add, it would add uh, 10 to times 3 factor, and we already have 1 zero here, so that's why I just write 85 times 10 to the power of 4. Then you see this equation, we have this. I think this is all familiar to you. Then we get this. V2 equals this equation. So um, we are given our constants in here. Writing these down, substituting them, we acquire the velocity, or actually speed, which is 300 and no, 3835 meters per second. So when the meteor crashes the surface, right before touching it, actually, it has a speed of 300 and, no, 3835 meters per second. And its velocity would be, would have a vector like this, downward pointing, okay? In option B, uh, the work that sand does. So, um, we have to examine what happens after it crashes. So, 
what happens is that it goes a bit of a um, distance in the surface and it stops. So which forces are we are present in here? Friction force, absolutely, and still um, the mag the gravitational force. So um, but what happens our meter also stops. So its kinetic energy is neutralized or it is um, its final kinetic energy is zero. So we can write uh, the work net work equals net I don't know work done by sand plus work done by gravitational force or gravitation. So and we know that work net equals delta K. They change in kinetic energies. So that means one house um, we f squared minus v i squared, but you know that. We have work done um, by gravitation as mgh. Why? Because, you know, let me show you that. So, um, gravitation is in this direction, so it has to be, since the um, our force vector and the displacement vector are pointing at the same direction. It has to be equal to. It has to come with a positive sign. There is no negative sign in in front of it. So. Yeah. This is why it's positive. Then we know that v sign is equal to also equal to v friction. The um, work done by friction force. Okay, then we just simply write it and then acquire this solution. That is, um, friction uh, work done by friction is almost equal to minus 4.23 times 10 to the power of 9 joules. Why minus? Because remember. Uh, um, object is going downwards, aka you might say um, minus y direction, but uh, friction is pointing upwards, so in the plus y direction. That's why we have a minus sign there. In C, we need to find the average force done uh, on the meteor, exerted on the meteor by sand. Average force is just equal to this, basically because we have um, this formula so our average force would be this I mean, you can see the correlation here since these are pointing at the same vectors and um, definitely that then we acquire this 1.30 times 10 to the power of 9 newtons. Then in option D, we have thermal energy. Thermal energy, it's actually, you can guess that I believe, because um, what stops the meteor also is friction. And the friction, what, um, what, is, what is the outcome of friction? Thermal energy. That is, the work done by friction has to be equal to thermal energy. That's also equal to 4.23 times 10 to the power of 9 joules. So, that is the uh, solution of this question. If you have any questions, you may ask them in the comment section. Have a nice day.